What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video we're going to learn how to transfer files via sockets in Python. So let us get right into it. Alright, so we're going to learn how to transfer files via sockets in today's video. And for this video, I recommend that you already have some basic knowledge about sockets, you should know what sockets are, and how to work with them in Python in general. So this video will focus on the specifics of sending and receiving files because the process is a little bit different here. Uh, but if you don't know what a socket is, if you don't know how to work with sockets in general in Python, I recommend that you watch one of my beginner or intermediate tutorials on network programming and sockets in Python. Uh, I have a couple of them. I think I have one video titled Sockets Explained in, I don't know, 10 minutes or something like that. You might want to check that out first if you don't know what sockets are and how to work with them. So in this video, we're going to talk about the specifics of sending a file, which works differently because of the fact that we cannot just say receive the full file, we cannot just say send the file, receive the file, we need to put some more logic into it, uh, which is what we're going to do in this video today. And we're going to start here with the sender script, we're going to have one sender script and one receiver script, the sender script is going to take the file and send the bytes via the network and the receiver script is going to take those bytes and construct the file. Uh, on the receiving end as well. And then it's going to be usable there as well. And here we're going to use as an example, uh, a simple image, uh, a YouTube screenshot, new achievement, 150,000 subscribers. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, and also an executable file to see that we can still work with it once it's transferred via the socket. And this is the process explorer, just a simple monitoring tool. And we're going to start with the sender here, we're going to say import OS, import socket, and we're going to start by saying client equals socket, 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 AFI net, so an internet socket, socket, sock, screen, uh, sock stream. So this is going to be a TCP socket, and we're going to connect here. In this case, we're going to do it on localhost. And the port is going to be four times nine. So you can pick any port that's free, but I'm going to go with this port, which is what I usually do in my videos. And for the sender, it's actually quite simple. The only thing that the sender has to do is he has to load uh, a file and has to send the bytes via the network. That's not too complicated because the sender knows how large the file is. The sender can just say, send it and that's it. The receiver doesn't know necessarily how large the file is. So this, uh, the receiver cannot just say get all of it because we don't know what all of it is. Right? So we can say client connect and then we say file equals open and we open the file that we want to send first of all the image PNG in reading byte mode, and we're going to uh, then determine the file size, optionally. Now we don't have to do that. But it might be reasonable to do it if we want to give some information to the receiving end about the file size, because the receiving end should also know, okay, not only I got, I don't know, 100,000 bytes, but so and so many bytes are left so that we can do something like a progress bar, maybe. So the file size is going to be os.path.get size of the respective file, in this case, image PNG, so that we know what the bytes are or how many bytes this file has. And this is an information that we can send to uh, the receiving end. Besides that, we're also going to send to the receiving end a file name. Now the file name is not that important. The important thing is the extension. So the receiving end needs to know what the extension is. Because if I send an executable, um, I should also call it dot so that the receiving end knows this is an application and can construct a file that works, right? Um, this makes sense. So we're going to say here, first of all, client sent, and we're going to call this here, uh, received image dot PNG, the important thing is the PNG, you can call this file, whatever you want. So we're going to send this string here and code it to the receiving end. And then we're going to oh, encode, sorry, uh, we're going to send it encode it to the receiving end. And we're going to then also say client sent string. So we're going to typecast the file size into a string. And we're going to encode that crafted string here. So first of all, the receiving end gets a file name, then the receiving end gets a file size, and then it gets the content of the actual um, of the actual file that it has to reconstruct. So we're going to say here done equals false. And we're going to say, um, or actually, we can do it with a loop, but I think on the sending end, it's actually enough to just say send all right. So we can say here, data equals file read, and then we can say, client sent all data. 
So this works on the sending end because the sender knows the file size, right? Now the receiver will also know the file size once we transmit it, but the sender already knows the size of the file, so we can just do send all, we cannot do receive all. A function receive all does not exist because we cannot just say receive everything that belongs to that file because we don't know what belongs to that file as a receiving end, right? Um, and then what we're going to do in the end is we're going to send an ending tag so that we know, okay, now the file is uh, over. Everything that comes after that is a new command or a new message or a new file. This file is now over. And how do we do that? We do that by saying uh, we're going to send bytes and then opening angle bracket and closing angle bracket. Now, this is not a keyword. This is not something that is a convention. This is just my invention here. So you can uh, also call this something like neural nine if you want to doesn't really matter you can define an end tag the way you like just make sure that this is not an ta a tag that is used frequently or can just occur randomly because if you spot that inside of a file somewhere or inside of the byte stream you're gonna think that the file is already terminated so you might want to take care of that um, so you don't want to do something like one two three that can occur in in a random byte sequence right and once we have that, we're just going to say file.close and client.close. So the sending end is quite simple. This is what we do. Again, let's recap. We create a socket, an internet TCP socket. We connect to localhost 9999. We load the image. We read the bytes. We get the file size. We transmit the file name to the receiver. We transmit the file size to the receiver. And we send all the data, including an ending tag to the receiver. That's quite simple. This is all we need to do on the sending end. Now for the receiving end, we're going to start a new script here, we're going to call it receiver um, dot py. And we're going to import socket. Now, I'm going to use a progress bar here. This is optional, you don't have to do this. I just like to see the progress. So if you choose to not do that, that's also fine. If you choose to work uh, with a progress bar, you will need to install an external uh, Python module. So you will need to use cmd and type pip install tqdm which is a library that I have made a video about already professional progress bars in Python, I think that's what it's called. Uh, and this allows us to easily craft progress bars. So we can say import tqdm. And now we can say server equals socket 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 dot afi net sock stream. So again, TCP socket, but this time we're not going to connect, we're going to bind, we're going to bind to localhost. 9999. So when you have a server, you bind when you have a client you connect, then we're going to say server listen. And we're going to say client address is equal to server accept. And we're not going to do this in a loop here because we just want to do this once we don't want to constantly accept new clients. Otherwise, we could do something like while true and start a new thread for each uh, each request, uh, request and then handle the individual files. That's also possible. But we're going to do this now just with one file with one connection. So we don't have to use a loop here. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to say first of all, we want to get the file name. And the first thing that we can receive here is the file name. Um, we can say file name equals client dot receive. Remember when we want to work with the connection that we accepted, we don't use the server, we use the client that was returned by the accept function. And here we provide 1024 bytes now and we're going to decode whatever we get here. This is the file name, we can print that. And then we can say file size is going to be client receive 1024 decode as well. Come on. And this is going to be the file size. So let's see if that works already. This should work, I think starting the receiver starting the sender here you can see received image PNG and 11,233 bytes. So this works already. Now let's go ahead and open a file for writing, we're going to say file equals open the file name that was transmitted in writing bytes mode. And then we're going to say the file bytes are going to be an empty byte string, we're going to append to that string all the time. Um, and we're going to say now, um, let me think about this. Let's first initial initialize a progress bar, we're going to say here done equals false, and then we're going to create a progress bar or a progress instance, I'm going to call this progress equals tqdm dot tqdm unit is going to be B capital B for bytes, 
the unit scale is going to be true. The unit divisor is going to be a thousand and the total. So the max size is going to be int file size. And based on that, we're going to build a progress bar. So here we just specify this is going to be bytes. This is going to be um, th this is going to scale. So we're going to have gigabytes, megabytes, and so on. And we're going to have this unit divisor here, um, which I think we can change to I think 1000 is actually the correct one. I think if we do 1024, this would be not um, I think there's a different scale here, you don't have kilobytes, you have Kibi bytes or something like that. I'm not sure. Uh, I think that is that that is the correct way to do it here. But what we're going to do now is we're going to say while not done, the data is whatever the client sends to us, we're going to receive 1024 bytes here. And we're going to say if the file bytes, the last five, so we're going to say from the last five, the last five um, characters or symbols characters that we have, um, if those are equal to this end tag that we're waiting for, we're going to say done equals true. Otherwise, we're going to say file bytes plus equals data. So why do we check for uh, these file bytes here? Why do we look for the end tag in the file bytes, not in the data transmitted? Uh, quite simple, sometimes it might happen uh, due to randomness or due to the length just I mean, it's not randomness, uh, due to the splitting of the data, it can happen that we get something like this here, we get E, like opening bracket E, and then in the next byte stream, we get ND closing bracket, uh, which will not be recognized as end, right. But if I append this first to that um, byte stream here, and then this in the end, we're going to have end. So we compare or we look for the pattern in the full byte uh, collection, and not just in some fraction of the data that we get here, right. So that is that then we're going to update the progress bar by saying progress dot updates. And since we're receiving 1024 bytes, we're going to say 1024 is going to be updated here. And we're going to say file right. Once we're done, file bytes, file close server close client close, maybe we should close the client before the server even though I don't think it makes a difference. But yeah, there you go. So let's start the receiver. And let's start the sender. Let's go to the receiver. Now this was quite fast, we didn't really see much because it's just 12 kilobytes. But um, there you go, we have the received image PNG, and we have the image PNG, the same image. Now this one is zoomed in. This is just uh, because I zoomed in, I can zoom in here as well. Uh, you can see it's the same image. And now let's see if that works also with the executable file if we can transmit the process explorer, uh, and also execute the process explorer afterwards. So prods exp uh, 64, same here. Of course, without the PNG. Um, but we want to call it differently, we want to say transferred dot exe besides that everything stays the same. So we're going to run this and we're going to run this and we're going to go here, you can see you saw the progress bar here for a second. Uh, but now you have this executable file, let's right click open in Explorer, you can see it has the right logo, I can double click and there you go, we have it. Now, you can try this um, on your own, you can take some video or some large application that has like a gigabyte of data and you can see the progress bar in action. This had just 1.51 megabytes, but it also works for a gigabyte. Uh, but yeah, this is how you transfer files via sockets in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.